okay so heart rate is less than 60 per minute despite ventilation with 100% oxygen for 30 seconds then you go ahead with chest compressions okay now after 30 seconds now how do we give uh, chest compressions there are two techniques of that one is two thumb circling hand technique okay the second one is two finger technique two thumb circling technique is you place your thumbs either side by side or one above the other at the mid sternum above the zephyr process not a not on the zephyr process because it may lead to laceration of the liver okay then you place that and you circle your hands onto the back of the baby support the back okay circle through the axilla towards the back of the baby like this and then you then you give chest compressions and the depth should be at least one third of the ap diameter one third of the ap diameter okay either up uh, I, I hope you can see. So thumb should be placed onto the sternum and encircling hands, encircling the uh, chest of the baby. And then you push, okay? Push at one third of the AP diameter, okay? And what is the rate at which we do? It is three is to one. Uh, now, this is also very important. Not like in adult, wherein it is uh, uh, rate of 15 is to two. Or 30 is to 2 okay the rate here is 3 3 is to uh, 1 so totally 120 events should be counted 120 events 90 compressions and 30 ventilations and by the time you start on chest compressions you have to have an ET tube into uh, ET tube in, in situ and with 100% oxygen so you give how do you give see this is 100% oxygen I told you okay so here this is two finger technique. Huh. This one I was telling you. Uh, the two thumb technique. Okay. Either side by side or one up or the other encircling the sides and supporting the back. Okay. Uh, the hands need not meet at the end behind onto the back. Okay. And two finger technique is with two fingers you push. So which one of these two is better? This is the better, better way of giving chest compressions now ecg leads should be there to confirm the heart rate okay this is the latest latest nrp uh, they reiterate this ki ecg tube ecg the chest lead should be there in situ okay now only disadvantage with ecg means the electrocardiogram is uh, pulse rest pulse rest electrical activity means heart rate is there on to the monitor heart rate is there but there isn't any pulse pulse felt okay so this is pulseless pulse is not felt but electrical activity is there so then again you take it as a system yes heart rate is not there in such situations for you to you should treat that as a system and continue your resuscitative process okay so here uh, now see i told you the ET, should, ET tube should be there. Okay, so once the ET tube is there, so this is TP's resuscitator. She is resuscitating with TP's. And so there would be an airway manager and he is doing the chest compressions. So the airway manager should move onto the left side of the baby and the chest compressions are given from the head end. Why, why is this change? Uh, this is the late, latest change. Why is the change? Because the next step we are anticipating is medications, okay, drugs. And how do you give drugs? You achieve a umbilical catheter. So clear to clear the airway means the area. Hence these two positions are the best position, okay. So the chest compressions are given on from the head and side, and the breathing is given from the sorry the right side, okay, wherein the pulse ox is placed. See preductal. Uh, saturation okay pulse ox now the next step even after giving chest compressions for 30 seconds say for sorry 60 seconds for 60 seconds you have given chest compressions and you again wait for some time and assess the heart rate if the heart rate has not gone up more than 60 then what do we do the next step is 
See, heart rate remains less than 60 despite adequate ventilation, 100% oxygen and just compressions for 60 seconds. Then you go ahead with the medications. Okay. So this is most important step in treating bradycardia. What are the things which we do? One is epinephrine. The second is volume expansion. Okay. So to have this, you have to have a vascular axis. What is the vascular axis? This is the umbilical venous root is the preferred root. Okay, umbilicus venous root is the preferred root. And if you cannot achieve it, then you can uh, get an introsious root for an emergency purpose. But always try to achieve this. Why not any peripheral line? Okay, why not a peripheral line achieved uh, to give an epinephrine? Why? Because umbilicus umbilical venous root is a central line okay the drug the epinephrine or any drug which we give which it directly bypasses uh, the periphery and goes directly to the central root now here see umbilicus venous axis uh, and uh, it directly goes to the heart and achieves its inotropic as well as dromotropic activity you understood hence we have to achieve a central line rather than a peripheral line so how do we what is the route of administration iv and this is central central iv what is the dose recommended it is 0.01 to 0.03 mg per kg per dose or 0.1 to 0.3 mg per kg of 1 in 10000 concentration this is the most important it is not available in India. The preformed one in 10,000 is not available. So you dilute it. Okay. How do you dilute? You take one ml of epinephrine, the regular epinephrine, and then dilute it in 10 ml. Means one ml of that and, 10 ml, and 9 ml of NS. And then it will be one in 10,000. Because the regular one which is available is one in 1,000. So that is how you make one in 10,000. And then of that, 0.1 to 0.3 ml per kg or 0.01 to 0.03 mg per kg. So do not uh, get confused of uh, both of them. You cannot say 0.1 to 0.3 mg per kg. Then you are giving 10 times the dose. Okay, so calculate it properly. So better you remember this dose for the sake of ease. Okay, now followed by NS flush. Immediately 3 ml of NS flush should be immediately given for further rapid activity. Okay, now uh, huh. see if you are not able to achieve the umbilicus venous axis, then you can give endotracheal root. You have already achieved the endotracheal, right? Means uh, the ET, ET is in situ. So then you have to, uh, you can give a dose of point. See here also it is point. Uh, mg per kg 0.05 to 0.1 mg per kg so that is equivalent to 0.5 to 1 ml per 1 ml per kg okay 0.5 to 1 ml per kg then ss again after 60 seconds okay so what happens if you uh, achieve an um, umbilical axis immediately after giving intravenous dose then if there isn't any response to endotracheal tube, uh, endotracheal epinephrine, you can give an, uh, a dose of intravenous dose as soon as possible. Means you need not wait for one or three minutes. Usually for a dose which is given intravenous, then you have to wait for three to five minutes. And then if the heart rate remains less than 60 per minute, then you give the second dose. But, but the dose which is given through endotracheum is not the same okay if it is immediately once you achieve the uh, umbilical axis then you can give uh, iv dose of epinephrine okay you need not wait for three to five minutes the next one is volume expansion when do we give volume expansion one is when you suspect or you know it is a blood loss means uh, any intra uh, intra partal means uh, during delivery any um, blood loss okay or uh, placenta previa okay abruptio placenta sorry not placenta previa abruptio placenta or vasa previa vasa previa is where uh, there are higher chances of uh, blood loss okay in such situations we suspect blood loss or any hypovolemia you expect 
then in such situations we give volume expansion what is the ideal uh, isotonic crystalloid solution it is ns 0.9% ns you can use rl but then ns is preferred than rl why because uh, it has lactate uh, rl has lactate which is which causes more of acidity so which we do not want okay so hence we give 0.9 ns is the ideal solution and blood See if you know the blood group, and if you know means if you know the blood group, and then you can cross match that that amount of time you cannot waste. So if you do not know anything, then go ahead with O negative blood. Okay, immediately uh, ask for an O negative blood, and then give it. Okay, so that is what uh, we give as blood. Or if you can cross match, then you have to cross match with maternal blood. Why? Because there are maternal antibodies present in the fetus, which will cross react with the blood. Hence, you have to cross match the blood with the maternal serum also. Okay. Then what is the do dose which we give? It is 10 ml per kg. So, this is the resuscitation. Okay. From A, B, C, D. Okay. So, initially airway, means initial stimulation. Okay. Then airway and breathing oxygen if necessary then breathing positive pressure ventilation and endotracheal intubation then chest compressions then drug lower down the requirement is less but you have to be prepared for each and every step for every delivery for each and every delivery you have to prepare be prepared for all these steps whether you require or not you you cannot anticipate 